Hey y'all, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my best tips for creating gorgeous baby shower cookies. So when it comes to baby shower cookies, we all love those pretty pastel cookies that just really convey the sweetness and the precious kind of nature of baby showers and celebrating a new baby coming into the world. It's such an exciting time. A couple weeks ago, I got to make baby shower cookies for one of my best friends. She is having her second baby boy. Uh, we're boy moms together. It's such a cool thing that we get to connect over being boy moms now. We've been friends for years and years. We've had our little friend group since we were little tiny girls about my boy's age and we just have gotten to stay together through the years and see all these different moments through each other's lives, weddings, babies, um, all that good stuff. And it was such a blessing to get to make cookies for her shower. I'm going to be sharing that process and giving you a tutorial on these super cute Peter Rabbit inspired baby shower cookies. And I'm also excited to give you tips and tricks and things that I've found work really well for any type of baby shower cookies while I've been doing cookies over the years. Now, like with any cookie theme, when doing baby shower cookies, I like to have some go-to cutter shapes that I can come back to again and again, regardless of the theme of the shower. I know I have these shapes that I can kind of make work with whatever theme. These are all Ann Clark cookie cutters, by the way. I got these on Amazon when I first began making cookies all that time ago. They have been my go-tos ever since. The metal is really, really durable. And I love that these cut frozen cookie dough so easily. Y'all know I love to freeze my cookie dough already rolled out in sheets. If you want to learn more about that process or about cookie decorating in general, if you're new to the world of decorating cookies, I have tons of playlists about how to make the dough, how I freeze it, my whole process. And I also have the Cookie Classroom, which is a pay what you can course that walks you through the entire process of making decorated sugar cookies with royal icing. Now, these are perfect for cutting through that frozen dough when it's in sheets and they make really, really nice crisp edges. So I have this cute little baby bottle and I've used all these different shapes in a bunch of ways depending on the theme of the shower. You can use different colors, but they all kind of are so useful when doing baby shower cookies. I have this cute little, it's like a stroller type shape. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. Here, I'll hold it up against my hand like a makeup influencer. <laughs> I have that little stroller shape. This rattle, I've used this so many times. It's actually starting to get a little bit worn here after like four years of using it very, very frequently. And then this onesie. The onesie is one of my favorites because it's so versatile. No matter what theme you're planning for your baby shower, I actually used these for this same friend when she had her first baby. We used these onesies and just had a different theme for her first shower, but we used this exact same cookie cutter for her second baby shower uh, this last time around. We just switched up the theme and what they look like and they turned out super cute. Now, Something else that I like to do when making baby shower cookies is create those really pretty pastel color palettes. I know when I do a set of cookies, I usually try to look at the invitation or some of the materials if I've been sent something for that particular event. I'll try to look at that invitation, maybe some of the decor that they've purchased if they can send me some pictures of that, and I'll try and match that color. Now, usually for baby showers, these are going to be those kind of toned down, muted pastels. I love that kind of type of vibe. Um, but the way that I achieve those types of colors when I'm creating royal icing is with neutral tones, neutral tones of gel food coloring. Now, when you buy gel food coloring, sometimes you can get it straight from the store or straight from online in the color that you want. That's great, and if you can find it, I'm all about it. But many times, I just couldn't find a ready-made bottle of the exact color that I wanted, so I would mix it. And I didn't want to buy food color and color just for, you know, one event. So a lot of times, I would mix it. 
And what I do to kind of create those pastels is using the AmeriColor Neutral Gel Food Coloring. This isn't sponsored, but I'll link to those food colorings in my description below. They make a white food coloring, a brown food coloring, and a black food coloring. I think the black is called Very Black. But I would adjust those different levels of neutrals along with whatever color I was using. Because sometimes when you buy just the color, say you put red or pink or blue or whatever into your icing, it's going to have like a candy type of tone. It's going to be a little bit more bright. It's going to be a little bit more like that traditional Easter egg dyeing food coloring vibe. But with adding the neutrals, when you add a bit of white or brown or black, I tend to add a bit of white, a bit of brown, and it tones down that color and makes it more of like a baby shower calming color vibe and I can usually match or get closer to matching the colors on the invitation and the colors that are being used for the baby shower that way. Now with each video lately that I've been creating I've been making a blog post as well so if you'd like to look through this in written form and check out all these different links and a little bit more in-depth information about what I'm sharing you're welcome to go to sarahgracecookieco.com and go to the blog area. Now usually my latest post will show up at the very top of my home page that way you can see those or somewhere on the home page, but you can also go to the blog section and see the latest post. Now, like I mentioned, when I'm trying to choose designs for a baby shower, I try and go with the theme of the shower and identify some of the shapes, patterns, colors that are being used in that theme from the wedding or wedding from the shower invitation, the decor, some of the inspiration images that people send me. For example, with Leah's shower this week, her mother-in-law sent me some really cute pictures from Pinterest that she had seen that kind of matched the feel they were going for. They love the Peter Rabbit books, and it's close to Easter, or it was when we had the shower. You're probably seeing this video a little bit after Easter. But it being close to Easter, the Peter Rabbit theme was so, so cute and fun. So with, with any type of cookie set, I like to just pick a couple of relevant cutters for example a onesie and a rattle or uh, like some shapes that i might like for example in this set i did these little cabbages and i just took some thick consistency icing like i would for florals if you'd like to learn more about florals you can go to my video from last week i'll link that down below as well but i just made these little cabbage shapes kind of like i would rosettes and then waited for those to dry and painted them with a green icing that i mixed from black and yellow food coloring mixed together. Mixed that with a bit of lemon extract and painted on the top to make it look like hand painted cabbages. Those were so cute and it's probably some of my favorite cookies I've done in the last little bit and they got rave reviews y'all. So if you're looking for something easy and quick then a floral for like a girl's baby shower or something like that that you can do um, really quickly and easily and then just add some color to after is a really good option. With the little onesie, I just did the really basic, simple, um, I made this one of my simpler designs. I just did one of the colors from the invitation. I alternated a couple colors with the blue and the green. I flooded the onesie with that color and then let that dry. Then I mixed a little bit more of my icing without any water in it into that flood consistency icing that I've already used. Then I took the thicker icing and made some patterns around the onesie just to give it some shape, to give it a bit of detail. And I like to add the little like armholes and neck hole and thing to make it look like it's a more 3D shape. But I didn't do a lot on these. I have done onesies in the past where I've done like the lace sleeves, florals painted and patterns on the onesies. I've done a lot of different onesie designs over the years, but these were just simple, easy, and super cute. They turned out really nice, and I think it kind of complemented that garden, country feel to have a simple onesie paired with these. Now, just like those little cabbages, I did a similar technique with the carrots. I just flooded everything white to create the base of the carrot and then used some thick consistency icing that I hadn't mixed any water into and I used white to do all this. 
and just made some leaf shapes at the top. And then when I got done with that, I painted over that with some gel food coloring that I had mixed to a kind of muted tone using some Wilton Orange gel food coloring and Americolor Brown. Then I mixed that with, again, a bit of lemon or almond extract and painted that like watercolor onto the little carrot cookies. Now you don't just have to use baby shower specific sets or baby shower specific cookie cutters when creating baby shower cookies. Here in the South, we love a good monogram. If you've ever been to a Southern baby shower and you've seen the ladies walking around the tables, looking at all the little smocked outfits to see the little monograms and embroidery, it's, it's just the best. It's so fun to get to fellowship with all the ladies in your church and your family and talk about the cute baby clothes that you're gonna get to see the new baby in. And just like adorable smock baby clothes, cookies can be monogrammed too. So anytime I'm doing a baby shower, I love to find out the baby's name, if they have a name picked out, or even the last name. You can use the last name of the family who's having the baby and create a really cute monogrammed cookie. And you don't need anything special or extravagant to create a monogrammed cookie. I actually use this plaque cutter that I've had for a really long time. Again, it's another one of those Ann Clark sets. I'll link it in the description below. It's just a cute plaque that I flooded with white icing. And then once that was completely dry, I used the food coloring and almond extract to create this pattern of watercolor vegetables. So I just kind of miniaturized the cabbage and carrot cookies and then added I'm not sure if this was like a rutabaga or a bee or what, but this was part of one of the inspiration pictures that her mother-in-law sent me. So I was trying to kind of make it look similar to that feel as well, but I used a little bit of a darker red tone to create a little beet looking vegetable. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to all, like if when you zoom in with them on a microscope, they don't have to look exactly like the vegetable you're trying to create. I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on creating these surface patterns on cookies for the background of a monogram like this. They feel like each shape has to be perfect and it doesn't. They're all gonna come together to look cohesive and have a, you know, you're gonna get the feel and the look without each individual piece being exactly perfect. So I try not to stress too much over those. Of course we want it to look good, but I try not to stress too much about it being exactly perfect because once the monogram or the letter goes on top of it, that's gonna kind of fade into the background and you're gonna be focused more on the part of the cookie, the decoration that's on top. Before that letter E on top of the pattern, I just used some of that thick consistency icing that I've used for the onesies and outlined that letter E and then filled it in with a flood. Now, I didn't use a projector for this. My projector's actually messed up right now. I've gotta work on getting me a new one soon. I keep saying that. I think I've said that for like three videos now and I've yet to make time to order one. Um, Y'all keep me accountable and remind me to order a new projector, but I just don't use them very often. And I do like to freehand uh, my writing. I have a video about doing freehand writing on cookies without a projector. When you're only doing three or four cookies, it just doesn't seem worth it to get out the projector when you can create that cute feel without it. If you don't have a projector, you can write freehanded, but if you have trouble writing freehanded or just don't feel like it looks as neat, another option is a royal icing transfer. I love creating a royal icing transfer, but you do have to allow for a lot of dry time with those and you have to be very careful when transferring something big. So on this one, I just used the freehand technique and did the best that I could, and I thought it turned out really cute. I looked at the invitation and the type of font that was on there and just tried to make that as close to that font as possible. Now, gingham was another pattern and look that was in the inspo pictures that her mother-in-law sent me. It's also something that we love here at Baby Showers in the South. We love us some gingham smocked outfits, so I thought this would go really well. Some people create this gingham pattern with an airbrush. I've never really had a lot of luck with my airbrush. I like it, I use it occasionally, but I do prefer hand painting. It's just a technique I like, I love the look of it, and that's what I did with these cookies. Since I already had that 
gel food coloring and extract out from painting the other cookies I thought it would make it look more cohesive to use that again and it was already there so why not so to start I flooded these square cookies with white icing once again that's kind of been a benefit of doing these cookies this way just having one color to flood everything with made it very simple to start with and I was able to get that flood on there so it could be drying before I did the final details. Now once that was completely dry and when I'm doing watercolors I like to make sure that my icing has dried for at least six to eight hours because you don't want to put pressure on it with your brush and have your icing break through. You want it to be totally dried through and I do this by leaving it out in the open air now a lot of people have comments and concerns about leaving cookies out in the open air they're not gonna get stale y'all if you put the flood on top of the cookie I feel like I'm fussing at my kids I'm not being mean to y'all I'm just <laughs> I get asked this question a lot so I want to share it um, when you flood the top of the cookie and it is kind of set with that icing. The icing creates a protective airtight seal on top of the cookie. Now, some people put these in their oven and leave a crack. Some people put them on a drying rack. Some people put them on their counter. The important thing to remember is that you want airflow between your cookies. You don't want to flood your cookies and cover them with saran wrap while they're wet because that will create weird textures on your cookies when you pull that saran wrap back to see if they're dry. And sometimes they won't even dry if there's no airflow in between. So you want to leave those out, usually overnight. Put them in a safe place where you know they're going to be okay, uh, like in your kitchen on the counter or somewhere where you would normally leave things like fruit or whatever. And make sure that that airflow is going in between the cookies. Now. Once they've dried for six to eight hours and they're completely solid, you're not worried about breaking through with the brush, what I do to create this gingham pattern is I just try to find a brush that's really flat and I know I can just kind of lay on top of the cookie. So I'll grab a little bit of that color and I do like to go a little heavy on the extract to thin this icing out real good, <clears throat> to thin the color out real good and then I'll take the brush and just lay it across as I drag it. And I just try to make it as straight as possible. But with the country garden vibes of this set, I wasn't too worried about it getting out of hand. Because if it's not perfectly perfect, I think it goes with the set. Um, like I said, with an airbrush, you might could get more of like a perfect look. But that ain't me. Y'all probably figured that out by now. I just take my brush and make as straight a line as I can. Once I got ready to take some photos of these baby shower cookies, I just placed a lace tablecloth and a pillowcase that kind of matched the color of the cookies that I was making down on a table. And I used some fresh flowers that I bought at Sam's this past weekend to kind of lay around and add to that spring feel. And I always just try uh, to get some really good pictures of these baby shower cookies because the showers, the baby showers, wedding showers, all that stuff, those were some of the sets that I got the most referrals from when I was running my home cookie business. And I love having really good pictures. That way I can tag the person that I was making cookies for and their friends and family can see it on Facebook, their friends and family see it at the shower itself and it really does help drive referrals for your cookie business. Now remember if you have questions or ideas about starting a home cookie business you can learn more about that in the description below. We do have the Cookie Career Community which is a Facebook group especially for ladies who are running their home bakeries. We're a group of ladies who are learning to grow our home bakery businesses together with guest speakers, with special training from me, with resources that I've created over the years that I share with you in our community. It's a monthly subscription and you can cancel anytime. So if that's something you're interested in, just check that out below. Thank y'all so much for watching today. I've enjoyed spending time with you here in the kitchen again. And if you have any questions about baby shower cookies, about how to maybe start with a really simple set if you're just getting started in the cookie world or how you can up your baby shower cookie game, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to talk with you a little bit further. Share any tips that you have for creating really great baby shower cookies. We'd love to hear from you.